there good looking? Are you ready to have a good time while you sweat? Awesome. This is the workout for you then. This is a no repeat strength workout and we will hit every muscle in your body. Now you need a couple of pairs of dumbbells for this workout. I recommend moderate weight. For reference, I'm using a pair of 12s and a pair of 10s. And FYI, you want to stick around to the very end. I have a special little ab finisher for us as well. You ready? Excellent. Lace up your runners. Let's go get busy. Why, hello there. I'm PJ from fitnesswithpj.com and welcome to my workout, which is also coincidentally day one of my 12 days of Christmas special. So are you ready? Awesome. Before I get going though, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. And if you're watching this ads free on my Over 50 Fitness app, make sure you head to our private Facebook group afterwards and let me know what you thought of the workout. Now let's get warmed up and then away we go. And I'm gonna get rid of this hat because it's just gonna get in my effing way. Here we go. How's that for the Christmas spirit? <laughs> let's start by warming up the shoulders. Now we want the feet apart, knees are soft. Good, nice big circles going backwards. So this workout is one set of everything. We have 20 different moves to do. It'll flow quick and you're gonna have a good time and I, you will, you will hit every muscle in your body, I promise. I had a lot of fun programming this workout. Last three, two, one, good. Now feet together, step out to one side for a side lunge, hands in front of that knee and then rotate, hands back together and do it again, good. So warming up into the legs as well as shoulder and T-spine with this movement. Last two, one more. Excellent, okay, other side, here we go, step it out. Now when you step out and get side lunge, you're pushing your bum rearward you're keeping yourself still squared to me. And then follow your hand with your gaze as it extends behind you. Great job. Last two. One more. And feet shoulder width apart, toes slightly turned out, arms in a V position and then pull your shoulders towards your back pocket. Push your bum rearward and squat it out. Warming up upper back as well as into the legs. So the time that we have for our work is 45 seconds, 15 second break in between. And as mentioned at the beginning, we've got a special core finisher at the end. So please stay to the end, okay? Last three, two, one. Excellent. Arms down by your side. Give me a tap back. And then if your knees are feeling up to it, add a reverse lunge. Thumbs are being pointed to the wall behind you. Back shoulder and back hip aligned. Front knee and ankle aligned. Good, and again, you take your depth of lunge, however deep it feels good for your knees. One more each leg. And release, all right, shake it out. So we're gonna get going in about 30 seconds. Let me quickly demo the first two moves and then we'll just flow from there. I recommend you grab your heavier set of the dumbbells that you have. We're stepping out into a side lunge, feet together, and then the other side. After that, hip hinge. So let's try a hip hinge right now before we get going just so that we understand it. Place the hands at the top of the thigh there. Now push your bum rearward and hinge over. So see how you've got that neutral spine? And then from that position, we'll add a row pattern. All right, and then our third move, we'll combine those two. You ready? Awesome, side to side lunge. Ready, set, go. Now on this lunge, you can also get rid of the dumbbells or just hold on to one dumbbell. So I want you to find something that's gonna challenge you. And if you're brand new to exercise, I always recommend no weight for all the movements. Get your form and then add on the intensity with weights after. Now, as we did in our warm up, you're staying square to me. Knees are tracking with the toes. Good. Bums being pushed rearward. 
and you're keeping that neutral spine. So whatever spine you have standing is that same spine when you're right here. Good job. They call that a hip hinge. Really important movement time. Really important movement pattern to learn. So now we've got that hip hinge again, okay? So hip hinge, knees hip width apart, abs engaged, hands slightly in front of the shoulder, pull up, pull the shoulder blades together, release. Now you don't have to jack the elbows right up there, all right? Ideally, the elbows are just going a little past the rib cage and that's it. Then from there, you squeeze the shoulder blades together. To modify this, you can also go one at arm at a time. So it looks like a piston row, okay? Or as well, drop down your dumbbells, right? Pull in the belly button, tighten up that deep core. Your low back may fatigue in this position, but there should be no pain. So again, readjust, make sure you have neutral spine. Now in less than 10 seconds, we're going to combine. Side lunge, row, side lunge, row. Time, awesome. You ready? So step it out, I want you to mirror me, okay? So step it out to your right, push your bum back. Now give me a row, good. Feet together, other side, row, excellent. If you're holding on to one dumbbell, you would just switch which arm holds on to it, each side. So each arm gets a row as you side lunge. You're remembering that hip hinge pattern. There should be nothing happening in that low back. If you're feeling your low back, you're not hip hinging. Get rid of the dumbbell, get that hip hinge pattern first, okay? Promise me that, yes? Good. <laughs> Last 10 seconds, and then we'll do a little drill to get the heart rates up and continue on with some more strength. Time, whoo! All right, dumbbell off to the side. Taking it for 45 seconds, we have three squat pulses and then pop it up. Now you can also pop it up by coming off of the heels as you'll see me up here instead of the jumps. Let's go. Three, two, one, pop. Now advance people, keep going. Grab onto a dumbbell. Yeah, good. So same thing, right? Hip hinge here. So again, super important movement pattern to learn. Woo, we want to feel those quads, come on. Three little pulses, pop it up. You're either jumping or lifting off your heels, but you are pulsing down here with me, don't skip that part. Less than 10 seconds and we're moving on. Time, all right, beginners, no weight or a really, really light one if you have one close by. Everybody else, lighter of your moderate. Mirror me, arm goes straight up, okay? Now take this opposite toe and turn it away from you. Bring this hand on the inside of the leg. Now push the hip away while we keep shoulders aligned and wrists aligned, and then come back up, good. So it's a side hinge of the hip, pushing the hip, not bending the spine, Doing a movement pattern, arms stay straight, so lock it out almost. A movement pattern called a windmill. Whoops. It's an awesome core exercise. But if you have tight shoulders, it might not feel good for you. So I want you to, maybe then, you, maybe you'll bring your dumbbell down here, okay? And that's where your weight is, down there. All right? Or no weight. Time. Other side. So. We want to turn the toe out, get that arm up there. So we're keeping the wrist, shoulder, and then we're in that half rep position, shoulders are aligned. Right there, see, go. The other hand is sliding down the inside of the leg, trying to touch your shoe or the ground. You are gonna bend this leg that has the dumbbell up in the air a little bit, but your other leg with the toe that's turned out stays fairly straight. As mentioned, super good core move right here. Now, 
We're gonna grab the partner to your moderate dumbbell in less than 10 seconds for some shoulder presses. Time, all right. Grab a pair of dumbbells. For reference, I'm gonna use my tens. Our setup is feet, shoulder width apart, all right, abs engaged. Hands up to the shoulders, palms facing me. Now press them both up and lower. 45 seconds of shoulder presses. To modify, lighten your load. Do one arm at a time. Or hold on to one dumbbell with both hands. All right, there are your options. Now draw that belly button in. You need to really root yourself in this spot. A lot of core here when we're doing a press motion above the head. And it's also important that you've got movement in your upper and mid back to do this movement. Otherwise it's gonna come through your low back. So if your low back is hurting a bit, that may mean that we need to work more on what we call your T-spine mobility. Time. Woo. 15 second break, shake out those shoulders because we're going to rack the dumbbells back up and do a squat. Now, if you have tight hips like I do, you're gonna go a bit wider. Bye, Bella. <laughs> All right, dumbbells up and knees track with toes, drop it down. Now, another way you can hold on to two dumbbells is smush them together and hold in front of the body. Good. So we've got that hip hinge again. So you've heard me say it. Probably enough times to turn this into a drinking game, but anyways, again, I can't emphasize enough. We've got to learn how to hinge through that hip joint. Now in 20 seconds, we'll combine the two. All right, squat and then add a shoulder press as we come up. Time, Woo. All right, I'm gonna bring my stance in just a bit tighter. My feet are still shoulder width apart though. Hands are coming up to the shoulders. We start with the squat as we come up, use the leg power to help generate the dumbbells going up. Here we go, squat, good. Now, I've had comments on the channel in the past of people asking me to cue you when to breathe. I don't do that. I just want you to F and breathe, okay? <laughs> the reason being, we're not lifting heavy enough where it really matters when we breathe in the movement pattern. So quite often when I tell people when to breathe, they inadvertently stop breathing for a few seconds and they try to work out that breath pattern. I just want you to breathe. Breathe, natural breathing pattern that works for you, okay? Woo, couple more reps. Time, awesome. Dumbbells off to the side. We're gonna work the lateral hip a little bit, get the heart rates up. We've got some side to sides here. We're landing soft, okay, and trailing that leg behind us. Add the hop or low impact, like me, see me above there. Got it? Good, I'm gonna do the hop. Tapping that leg behind. It's almost like a speed skater move. Almost, it is a speed skater. <laughs> That's why it's almost like a speed skater move. 45 seconds here, let's go, let's go, come on. Get those hips fired up. Okay, come on, 10 seconds now. Let's see if we can go a little faster. Time. Good job, you. All right, bicep curls. Find a weight that's going to fatigue you. I'm going to try 12s. Okay? Stand nice and tall. As we curl, we rotate the pinky so the palms face the shoulder and then lower. Do it again. Lower to a fully straightened arm as well. Nicely done. Don't move through the trunk. Don't swing the arm. Come on. Keep it strong. Now, you need to modify this one arm, one arm at a time, okay? And that allows the other arm to rest a little longer. Otherwise, keep going, we got 20 seconds. And then we allow the arms to rest a bit and work into the legs.
time. All right, alternating reverse lunge. Now, if your knees are sensitive, your lunge may look like this, where the leg stays fairly straight. All right, you work what's going to work for you. Deal? Go. And remember how you can dial this baby back, right? Get rid of the dumbbells, body weight only. Now, when you lunge down that back leg, you want that back shoulder and hip aligned. Quite often I see people lunge like this. A lot of their weight is on that front leg. I want it on your back leg. Excellent. Keep the arms still. Shoulders pull back and down. 15 more seconds. We'll get a bit of a break and then we'll combine lunge and bicep curl. One more. Time. You can let the dumbbells down for a sec if you need to. Shake out the hands, right? The grip strength can really take a bit of a beating on these type of workouts. All right, so we're stepping back for the lunge, and every time we step back, we curl. Ready, set, go. Pass the halfway. Moving on after this. Come on, stay strong. You got 45 seconds in you. Let's do it. One more. Time. All right, you only need one weight. For reference, I'm going to use a 12. Feet are apart, wider than the shoulders, toes slightly turned up. We're doing a dumbbell snatch. I want you to think about making a letter, half a letter X. So it's zip up, press up, down, other arm. Zip, press. Good. Now, we're hinging from the hip. I know, I sound like a broken record, sorry. <laughs> You're bending the knees. All right, we got a lot going on with this movement. So if you're new to this movement, I want you to try it with no weight. Just get that movement in through the shoulder and the legs and then start up. Last 10 seconds. Time. Good job, you. All right, I'm going to grab my 10. You just need one. We're training shoulders here and pecs as well as a lot of core. It's a really cool move. Feet shoulder width apart, abs engaged, dumbbell up. Now press it towards me and bring it back. Good. So when the dumbbell's out there, believe it or not, you have a ton of deep core muscle fired up so that you stay rooted. Good. I'm going to face you now. Excellent. When the timer goes, we'll train into the triceps, at which I'm going to actually switch out to a little heavier weight. Knees are soft. You're really rooted in that lower body. Breathe. Again, don't worry about when. Just breathe and you'll be fine. <laughs> Time. All right, I'm going just a touch heavier. I'm kickstanding one foot behind me. I find that helps me with my low back. Arms are up. Dumbbell's going to drop behind the head and then straighten the arms completely. Let's go. This is a behind the head tricep extension. My back foot, the heel's off the ground. I'm just resting. I'm putting a lot of body weight in that back leg, almost, almost like a tripod, but I'm staying off my heel. Again, I just find this more comfortable for my low back. You play around with your stance. And make sure you can feel the back of your upper arms working. If not, you need a heavier dumbbell. Maybe Santa will bring you one for Christmas. <laughs> Last couple of reps. 
time. Woo. All right, we're going to combine those two, dumbbell press to overhead um, tricep. I'm going to try and keep my 12 for this. It's going to be a challenge, but I'm going to give it a try. So let's get set up. Dumbbell up. Okay, now start with the press to me. Bring the dumbbell back. Now press it above the head. Do the tricep. Finish it and press it back out. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. So that's it. Six counts. We're almost there. We we are moving into that fun core series I said we were going to finish with. So see how fast this went. Now I aim every workout to go by this fast for you. That you're having such a good time you don't even know you're working out. Sometimes I succeed. <laughs> time. Sometimes I don't. All right, I'm going to switch out to my 10. Get down on the ground for me. Dumbbell straight up, hand on each end. Legs in tabletop. Draw your belly button in and push your low back into the ground. Now with the low back into the ground, slowly extend your left leg and straighten it. Heel down to the ground. Bring the knee back. Now the other leg. So as the leg drops, at no time do you allow your low back to lift. Now let's try left leg and both arms drop for a pullover. Whew. Makes it a little more challenging, doesn't it? <laughs> so if you're finding that low back popping off, you can't control it, I want you to keep the hands above the chest. Don't add the dumbbell moving behind the head because the whole idea of the dead bug is to activate your deep core muscle, your transverse. And the only way we can do that is to keep that low back anchored. time. Now stay here for me. We're going to do that same thing. Draw the belly button in towards the spine. Anchor the low back. Okay. Now as we drop now just your left heel, bring the dumbbell down to the chest. Tap the heel to the ground. Press the dumbbell up. Go. Now these two moves are osteo-friendly as well, if you have osteoporosis or osteopenia. We have one more ab move, which is not going to be osteo-friendly for you, at which point I'm going to cue those of you with osteoporosis or osteopenia to give me a front plank on the forearms, okay? Time. All right. Russian twist with the dumbbell. Beginners, no dumbbell. And then again, if you have osteoporosis, I want you to give me a front plank, okay? Now, nice and tall on the spine from this position. Twist. See if you can get the hands to touch the ground. Twist the other side. You don't want to allow that low back to round. Good. Advanced people, lift the feet off the ground now. This is our last exercise. So let's go. Oh yeah. 20 seconds. Come on, you guys. Time! Well done, you! All right, let's stretch out the hips and the abs. Left knee underneath the hip. Left ankle lines up with the knee. This front knee and ankle lined up. Squeeze that left glute. Lift that arm up and over and reach. Great job, you. So I love these no-repeat workouts, but only on a once-in-a-while basis. The reason being is, especially if you've been working out for over three months, it is actually the multiple sets that fatigues the muscles and that allows you to get you your, your results. But every so often you pepper in these no repeats or those days that you just don't feel like working out and you get your workout in, that's perfect. But to do on a regular basis, you will not achieve the goals that you're looking for. Which for most of us is fitter, stronger, you know, maybe drop a few pounds. <laughs> 
But uh, now let's step it back, heel up, or toe up, pardon me, heel on the ground and lean forward. And then as you go with your fitness plan, it's super important that you also think about progressive overload, that you are challenging the muscles, that you are increasing your intensity with heavier dumbbells. So you may need to ask Santa for some heavier dumbbells. And Santa won't mind. He told me that. He asked me to relay to everybody here in the community that he would prefer to deliver dumbbells than any other gift <laughs> that he has on his sleigh. <laughs> and release. Other side. All right, knee underneath the hip. Bring that arm up. Reach up and over while you squeeze that right glute now. Now, these videos will stay on the YouTube channel well past our 12 Days of Christmas challenge. So if you're watching this in July, you're probably getting a good giggle. <laughs> and then if you're having decision fatigue as to what workouts to pick to get the best results for you, Come and join us on Patreon. It helps support the Fitness with PJ YouTube channel, and in return, you'll receive a monthly workout calendar each and every month. All right, straighten that front leg, chest over thigh. And release, big toes together, knees are open, sit your bum back, walk your hands forward, forehead to the ground, stretching the sides of the body as well as your low back. Onto the belly, forearms underneath the shoulders. Good, or elbows underneath the shoulders on the forearms. Lift yourself up, look up, shoulders away from the ears, extending the spine, stretching your abs. Try to release your glutes. Drop your hips down further into your ground. And release. You did it! Hey, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the workout, hey, give it a thumbs up and make sure you drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of it. Now, if you need any details, such as how to support the channel or how to grab your free 14-day trial on my app, Over 50 Fitness, or any of the equipment that I use, all of that information is down there in the description. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, and we will see you next workout. Bye!